in the 115th U.S. Congress, there are 55 new members. The freshman class, if we were in school, right? 55. Of the 55, 25 of them are either African American, Latino, Jewish, Asian American, or Indian. 25 out of 55, that's 45%, which is a, it's a portrait of what the United States is today. For 27 years, we led the effort in rebuilding that wonderful alliance that today is very much close to the level of cooperation that we witnessed during the civil rights struggle. So we have demonstrated an authentic commitment. I pray that we should continue to see each and every person as a human being who has the needs, the hopes, the hungers, the feelings and the fears just as we do, who is a child of God just as we are, and who is entitled to be treated with the dignity, the justice, and the compassion that we claim for ourselves. This is a unique accomplishment when Jews and Muslims open their doors, open their hearts, open their religious places of worship, the entire nation benefits. And that's what we are celebrating today. Thank you very much. One of the things that unite us, and that's one of the things that brought me to Congress, is to work in a bipartisan way, in a way that I know that I can speak about my ethics, that I was raised to, like all of you, to make the world a better place and how we found it. And like the rabbi said, and that you so wonderfully said, that we celebrate that with our words, our deeds, and our actions every single day. And so I'm here in Congress to work across the aisle, to work with my friends, to work with all of you, and to try to bring those values to our governing to be sure that whatever decisions we make, we need to be tough, we need to be smart, but we also need to have compassion. And without that, those decisions are empty. If we can move this society and, and indeed this world to a place where we don't see other, but we see the God in each of us, uh, we would have done the Lord's work on this, on this planet. And I hope to be part of that effort. So I thank you for all that you all are doing. And I look forward to working with you in the future. God bless you. More than at any time in my life, I believe it's important that people of faith, across faiths, come together and work to understand each other, to know ourselves and who we are, but also to know and understand the other and find in that the common humanity. So it's good to be back. I look forward to working together with my new colleagues and with all of you and making this a place where, um, Doctor, that invisible wall that separates all of us gets not just broken down, but shattered and removed for our generation and generations to come. Thank you very much. The reason we are a beacon to the world, if we are still a beacon to the world, uh, is because we're a society of great ambition and restlessness and openness where people can come and they can maintain their pluralist commitment to their own individual religion, race, ethnicity, heritage, but also be part of a broader community and uplift themselves in the process and not just be that one thing that you might be confined to if you were in another part of the world. So I think that's what makes us great uh, to be America. The and Muslim community for the last 15 years has been struggling to get its voice out. And the rabbi gave me this platform to come and speak to you uh, to share a few things with you that are of importance to this community. Um, we all know that the global rise of violent extremism is one of the greatest problems facing the world today. Certainly it affects our community uh, more than any other community. And it affects us all, especially women and children who are the bedrock of their families and their communities. And unfortunately, the peaceful religion of Islam continues to be linked to terrorism. 
with far-reaching consequences threatening our national unity and our shared civic life here in America and causing severe reputation damage to our great religion, the world's second largest religion. We hope you agree that it's time to take a stand against the spread of this violence, divisiveness, and hate. We took part in exactly what this foundation has worked so hard to promote, racial harmony and stronger intergroup relations. And that's what we have now, truly, in Congress. And it's an opportunity that we need to not lose. Um, we all know that America's rich ethnic diversity is one of our strongest traits. Um, and I don't want to be partisan because I know this is a nonprofit organization, but the nationalism that we heard at the beginning of this weekend, the jingoistic, insular, turn inward attitude, um, will not help us move forward. And I I'm confident that the diversity that has occurred as a result of this election will help us finally bring that mosaic of experiences to the halls of Congress. And that means that America has every hope for our future. So thank you again to the Foundation for Ethnic Understanding, uh, to my colleagues who I know joined you earlier, and to all of you for the vital work that you do. And I'm very confident and about the months ahead in terms of, of, of what we can do to stand by Israel and making sure that Israel has what it needs to continue as such a critical ally uh, uh, in the region. And as we remember, and always remember, that Israel's success is critical to our security. Which is that our community came together, all faiths, all ethnicities, all religions, and started a One Orlando Fund and uh, had phrases such as Orlando Strong and had rallies with everyone you could imagine. Uh, and it was love that conquered. It was understanding that conquered the great tragedy that my community faced. And so I not only come to you from an area that is diverse, but an area that is diverse and has overcome major challenges. Uh, and hope, and I hope to be able to continue to bring that message to of harmony, of unity, of tolerance uh, to so many uh, members of this Congress as well as uh, folks around America so, and around the world. So thank you so much and uh, we really appreciate you having me.